Who's ready to fly on a zip line? I am. What's that? Pathfinder? That's right, guys. How's it going? My name is Valued, and today I'm going to teach you guys how to dominate in Apex Legends with Pathfinder. Make sure to pay attention because you're not going to want to miss the tips in this video. But without further ado, as Pathfinder says, I am ready. I hope you are too. So Pathfinder hasn't changed for quite some time, and with the addition of all the other recon legends in the game, a lot of players find his kit to be a bit underwhelming in Season 10. While they did remove low profile from the game, making his hitbox a bit better than it used to be, Path can still be an underwhelming pick for inexperienced players. So you probably ask, why do high level players actually even play him? We see a ton of Pathfinder highlights all over YouTube. And while he might not have all the crazy effects on his abilities, he has one in particular that makes up for it all, his grapple. This ability is Path's identity. So where better to start than here? Pathfinder's grapple is where the vast majority of all his strength comes from, as this is arguably the most diverse and useful ability in the game. When he uses his tactical, he shoots a grapple hook at a target surface, latching on and pulling himself toward the location. The max range for this to latch on is 21 meters, and you get a little blue indicator on your crosshair when you're in range for the ability. Sounds simple, right? Well, where it gets really crazy is how much momentum manipulation you can do with the grapple. You want to make sure you're jumping basically every time you're using Pathfinder's grapple from the ground. By getting off the ground, you can get moving a lot faster without the ground being in the way. And it opens up your ability to do some pretty crazy swinging moves. You see, Pathfinder's rope will stay attached so long as it doesn't go beyond a 90 degree angle. This means that you can use it to swing yourself, allowing you to find way more angles and really get your momentum going. The simplest version of this is to hit your grapple and immediately jump into the air, adjusting where you're looking based on where you want to go. Where your grapple is hooked and where you're looking are the two biggest factors that will dictate where the grapple will take you. Just make sure you do not exceed the 90 degree angle or the grapple will break and it will cancel. The cooldown for this ability is 10 to 30 seconds, with it becoming longer the further you travel with the grapple. The distance is primarily focused on a horizontal travel. So if you do some pretty crazy grapple that flies straight up in the air, or you do one that shoots you across the map, the one that travels more horizontal distance will have a bigger impact on the cooldown timer. I could tell you more about this ability for hours, but rather than just doing that, I'm going to break down some key tips and techniques when using this ability that can really help you unlock its true potential. Speaking of potential, what better way to unlock your true potential to become a top level Apex player than to learn the game from the king of Apex himself, Imperial Hal. Hey, what's up everyone? I'm Imperial Hal and welcome to my brand new Apex class. This class goes over everything you need to move, shoot, and think like me. Whether you're silver or diamond, controller or keyboard, you're going to be the one carrying your friends. I typically can't get to all your comments, but this course is actually going to help you guys so much in all your questions. If you're serious about becoming a better Epic player, join me for the next 30 days and commit to improving. Okay guys, so let's start out with something simple for our first grapple tip. This ability can be used really quickly in gunfights to get an advantage, and my favorite way to do this is to get a quick grapple hop by using the grapple on the ground in front of me. If you get used to grappling in front of you, combined with a jump and adjusting your camera upward, you can do a quick launch forward that can be a great use for quick gap closing or to hop over an obstacle. This can also be used to make a quick getaway if you don't have anything better to latch onto, as it's a quick way to gain a bunch of momentum. And as you guys hopefully know, Apex Legends movement is fully based on momentum. Just keep in mind, if you do this in front of a couple of enemy players, it can be easy to get beamed. While you will move faster than just sprinting, make sure you're actually being smart about using this trick so you don't get yourself in any trouble. So next up, you've got to make sure you're getting the most out of the momentum you gain off the grapple. Swinging around super fast is great, but where the real power comes in is when you can channel this speed even after you hit the ground. Make sure you're sliding out of your grapples at the very least, or even better, bunny hopping. B-hopping feels so good when you do it with all this built up speed, and it can be a great way to get the most out of this movement. Other ways of getting the most out of this is to try to hit some kind of an incline as you're hitting the ground. If you can grapple and then find a hill before you lose your momentum and then keep that momentum going with the hill, you can cover some serious ground fast. 
Speaking of carrying that momentum after you finish grappling, make sure you aren't keeping the grapple attached for too long. You can cancel the grapple at any time during the ability, and this can be a big difference maker in what direction you go, as well as how fast you go in that direction. This might sound simple, but all too often, paths will just hold onto the rope for too long, causing them to hit the ground too aggressively or at an angle that stalls a lot of their momentum. The key is to release the grapple early enough that you aren't smashing into the ground or a wall, but also late enough that you get as much momentum from the swing as possible and then head in your desired direction. So I'm sure you guys have seen a Pathfinder flying through the air at a height that you thought only possible for Valkyrie. Well, the way they do this is by applying everything we've talked about so far, but by using something above them. Whether it's on a wall in front of you or a beam hanging over your head, you can get really creative with the angle of your grapple and get some serious air. This can be great when you're trying to get on top of a building quickly or you're just looking to find a unique angle on enemies in a power position. Keep in mind, if you go flying, you're gonna be pretty vulnerable until you make it back to the ground. So make sure you've got a safe place to land and get your bearings before you need to fight. And for our fifth tip here, we talked about using your movement on your way out of your grapple, but don't forget about your movement before your grapple as well. A well-timed wall bounce into a grapple can be one of the coolest ways to quickly redirect your movement. And the height off the wall jump can often get you quickly in grapple range of other obstacles that you couldn't have gotten if you didn't wall bounce. Another thing I like to personally do is use my grapple as I'm dropping off of height. You can often bait enemies into thinking you're dropping, only to grapple back up and swing on them as they go running off chasing you. And even in non-combat situations, jumping off a building and doing a Spider-Man swing to get the most out of your height is a great way to cover a lot of ground. And guys, let's just be honest, it looks really cool. And speaking of cool, don't forget guys, you can grapple enemies as well. This rarely has a good use, but the ability to grapple a downed enemy and pull them to you for the finish can be a great way to get an armor swap quickly when you aren't safe to just run to them. And if you've ever grappled someone and meleeed them for a down, you know just how BM this can be. It's a small thing, but a very cool interaction nonetheless. All right, guys, so enough about the grapple. Let's move on to the rest of Pathfinder's kit. His ultimate allows him to shoot a zipline that's usable by all players in the match to quickly traverse areas. You can shoot this thing up to 100 meters, and it can be nearly straight up and down as well, making it super flexible and helpful when navigating the map with your squad. Now, keep in mind, this ability is not as fast as an octane pad or as quiet as a wraith portal, so you definitely need to be careful when using it if enemies have a line of sight on you. The best way to use it is to navigate the map without enemies around, closing the gap between you and enemies who aren't currently aware of your location, or have it set up as an escape route if things go south in a fight. Personally, the last option is where I actually think it shines. If you're holding down a power position and the ring rotates or a team starts to push you, having a zipline already set up to get out is a great perk. Not to mention, if you use it ahead of time, the cooldown will already be recovering itself having a much higher chance of the ability being back up if you need to use it again. Now, keep in mind guys, the zip lines can be used by anybody, so don't give people an easy way to get to you right behind you. Also, another thing is you could do all the zip line mechanics on this thing that you can do on other zip lines. There isn't as much as you can do with this one as you can with the vertical zip lines you find on the map, but the best simple movement that can come in handy is a zip line super jump. By hitting, interacting, and jumping at the same time, you can launch yourself into the air, adding in some movement to avoid shots, or even close a gap on an enemy. Combine this with your grapple and you can get some really interesting combos going. So finally, we have Pathfinder's passive insider knowledge. This basically just gives him some perks to his ultimate cooldown whenever he uses a survey beacon. When you use a survey beacon, his ultimate cooldown will be fully restored and the overall cooldown of the ability will be reduced by 10 seconds per beacon you use in a game. This means his ult cooldown can get as low as 80 seconds if you manage to get four beacons in one game. Also, make sure you're using your zipline before you grab a survey beacon. Doing so will give you an extra free zipline. So, you might as well make sure you're getting the most out of the perks of the passive. If some of Pathfinder's abilities seem a bit underwhelming, it's because they can be. But trust me when I say, if you master his grapple and the movement options that it provides you, the rest of his abilities are just icing on the cake. Seriously, Path's grapple is basically an independent octane jump pad with a lower cooldown. And it has more flexibility when you get it down. 
One big thing with Pathfinder is you need to get into the firing range and practice your timing with this ability and get creative. Pathfinder's kit is only limited by what you are able to pull off. And the possibilities are nearly endless once you get comfortable with combining his movement with the rest of his abilities. All right, guys, I know we didn't cover every single thing that's possible with Pathfinder, but if you follow today's tips, I promise you'll be well on your way to mastering our favorite robot. For all you Pathfinder mains since season one, let us know what your favorite grapple or advanced movement technique is on this legend. And if you're gonna be picking him up for the first time, I wanna hear about that too. Are you having fun with him? Anyway, guys, make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed today's video. And as always, it's been valued and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.